Okay, we're gonna start the meeting. So uh, today we're gonna do the uh, flag salute, and after the flag salute, please remain standing for a moment of silence. We're gonna uh, pay tribute to a fellow educator, uh, the uh, Dr. Derek um, Nelson, who was the uh, principal of the neighboring town West, uh, Westfield High School. He passed away last week uh, after he donated his bone marrow to a 14-year-old student in France. So after the flag salute, please uh, remain standing. All right, so um, flag salute. Uh -oh. Please be seated. Mr. Shi? Here. Ms. Darico? Here. Mrs. Ward? Here. Mrs. Maroney? Here. Mr. Brescher? Here. Mrs. Patel? Here. Mrs. Conway? Here. Dr. Chen? Here. All present with Mrs. Peng. Opening statement. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have the advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance, in accordance with the provisions of this act, the Edison Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted in the Board of Education administrative offices. Copies of the notices were sent to the Home News Tribune and the Star Ledger on January 3, 2019. The public may participate at regular meetings in accordance with the bylaws and the applicable state regulations. So today the first item is the, uh, the favorite part for a lot of the board members. Uh, it's a student recognition. So without any further ado, Mr. Papsaki. Greetings, everyone. Let me just adjust this. There we go. Um, welcome to the student recognition. It's always a great pleasure to stand here and recognize so many deserving students. Um, just for those of you who have never been here before, the way it's going to work is I'm going to call to the podium uh, principals of the school. They'll announce your names. When you hear your name, you could stand up right where you are and if you want to see your, have your face shown on ESN TV, if you turn around and look back there where the waving man is, that is where the cameras will be, so it's up to you. If you want to stand around and be famous, this is your chance. Uh, at, the, uh, at the conclusion of the student recognition, I'm going to turn the program over to uh, Mr. Shi. He's going to have a resolution, and then we can all be dismissed after that. We good to go? Say yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll start the program off by calling to the podium the principal of Martin Luther King School, Ms. Arnold. Good evening. I stand here before you very proudly to announce the state and regional first place winners of OM, and they're going to world. So first, for the structure toss, Charlotte Dressel, Caleb Fu, Nitya Puli, Kavish Singh, Avika Shakla, Riti Sarji, Pranav Srivasan. For opposites attract, Carter Williams, Ria Lakilha, Akh Dashi, Anika Gina, Pradnavi Ganti, Jay Shivan, and Shi Palasundram. Congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. And now uh, a slight little change of the program. We're going to call up representing TJ and Woodrow Wilson, the Vice Principal, Ms. Mendorada. Good evening, everyone. 
I would like to thank Mr. Saxton and Edison Board of Education for providing us the opportunity to provide you know, student recognition at this ceremony uh, beyond the classroom. Under the direction of, so I'll present the awards for Thomas Jefferson Middle School first. Under the direction of Ms. Zuccaro, I would like to recognize the following students of Thomas Jefferson Middle School. For CJMEA Region 2 Choir, students please stand when you hear your name. Remy Roy. Polly Rizzo. Robin Nemeth. Haley Martin. Congratulations to you and all the other students and advisors recognized today. You can give a big hand to teacher students right here. Now, now I would present the Woodrow Wilson Awards. Um, once again, thank you on behalf of Woodrow Wilson Middle School for celebrating the achievement of our students. I would like to recognize Ms. Liu and the students for CJMEA Region 2 String Intermediate Orchestra. Pragya Singh. <laughs> Ashley Wong. <laughs> David Zhao. <laughs> Joshua Cho. <laughs> Kushi Sharma. And additionally, for all state orchestra, CJMEA Region 2 Intermediate Chamber Orchestra, I would like to recognize Justin Tam. <laughs> Under the direction of Ms. Ast, the following students are recognized for CJMEA Region 2 Intermediate Choir. Nitya Angadala, <laughs> Shruvani Ashtekar, Srinitya Bhatti Purulo, Anika Chakraborty, Namrta Chambari, Danya Desai, Saranya Dudagi, Anika Ganesh, Sia Krishnan, Arushi Malik, Nikhil Mola, Arohi Pahurkar, Dhruvi Patel, Parnad Rana, Mansi Tari Gopula, Abhishwi Teki. Next, I would like to recognize Mr. Fossa, our band teacher, and students for CJMEA Region 2 Intermediate Band. Andrew Jiong, Peter Laiga, Mia Zong. Hong Cheng, Brandon Cheng, Shravan Venkit, Andy Shu, Summer Simha Munagala, Christopher Wan, and Rihanna Shirelli. Congratulations to all our students. Thank you. And now the uh, principal from Herbert Hoover Middle School, Mr. McGrath. Good evening, I would like to thank Mr. Saxton, the Board of Education, and Mr. Prospecki for the opportunity to recognize all the accomplishments of our students from Hoover. First, I'll begin by recognizing those students who participated in the CJMEA Region 2 Intermediate Band under the guidance of their teacher, Mr. Cunningham. Boys and girls, when you hear your name, please stand, face the camera, and remain standing until the end. Vinya Menyon and Theodore Higgins Griffin. <laughs> Next, I would like to recognize those students who placed second in the Odyssey of the Mind, Omar to the Rescue competition under the advisement of Mrs. Savage and Mrs. Murtaugh. Please stand when you hear your name, Aditya Argawal, Arha Gatram, Mia Cabrera, Rahas Tiwari, Aliyah Lloyd, Savar Toteja. Third and finally, I will be recognizing those students who received first place gold at the FCCLA's Spring Leadership Conference under the advisement of Hillary Marks and Mary Capitan in the category of 
employees that teach, bringing home first place gold, which was a clean sweep for every competition. We'll start with Mia Cabrera. <laughs> Adedoyen Ayani. Lillian Mikhail Rizrat. Next, we'll move on to Reinventing Spaces. And if Pooja Katara, Ishan Shetty, Ronil Shah, Abi Tamboli, Reina Patel, please stand and face the camera. Next, taking home first place gold in Bread Basics is Sophie Hardy. Then we have our winners of the first place gold in the Storybook Ethics, and that is Tanvi Revila, Suhani Kashki, and Esha Mandrakar. And finally, we have the winner of the Hospitality 101, and that's Sanika Mandrakar. Please stand. I would now like to introduce my colleague, Mrs. Valentine from John Adams. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Saxton and the Board of Education. Thank you, Mr. Pispecki, for putting this together tonight. I'm so proud and honored to be the principal of the most amazing school in Edison. A lot of fans tonight, I like that. So we will begin with uh, introducing Ms. McAvoy and our Battle of the Books winners. First place state competition, Kavya Agarwal, Sarabi Bakov, Benny, Kaya Shata, Akila Madhara, Serena Yoon. Congratulations. Also with Battle of the Books with Ms. McAvoy, first place state competition, grade eight, Amy Crook, Naomi Crook, Ashmi Ghosh, Marika Jambudi, Arija Kundu, and Varija Mehta. Moving right along, I'd like to congratulate Mrs. Buckaloo and the CJMEA Region 2 Intermediate Band Award recipients, Luke Shen and Katie Fu. Also under the guidance of Mrs. Buckaloo, NJMEA Young Composers Composition Competition Middle School finalist, Aditya Ashok. Next, I'm extremely proud of this group under the guidance of Ms. Sego, who couldn't be here tonight, but I want to take the opportunity to recognize her since she also received an award this year. This is our first year in FCCLA. We joked about just experimenting, just dabbling. We weren't going to compete, but that wasn't enough for Ms. Sego. She wanted to take these kids to competition, and I'm so glad that she did. She won the award for Rookie Advisor of the Year. And, and these students worked so hard under her guidance. First place gold for peer-to-peer, -peer, Priya Patel, Shaja Patel, Anishika Shadavali. First place silver for lessons learned, Jaden Pinto. First place bronze program cover, Niha Patel, Nikki Patel, Sanika Patar. Second place gold, Manners Matter, Daksh Goyal, Om Pendakar, Vidi Malik. Second place gold, Varija Mehta. First silver medal, Reinventing Spaces, Navya Sinha, Anika Valuro, Pateri Parikh. Second place silver, Reinventing Spaces, Amanda Chen, Kumna Panawala, Manha Talib. Third place gold, Storybook Ethics, Niha Patel, Nikki Patel, Sanika Patel. 
Congratulations, FCCLA. You did an amazing job this year. We're so proud of you. And finally, representing John Adams Middle School, Mrs. Orzakowski and the Math Competition Club. We're also extremely proud of this accomplishment. It is also our first year having a math competition club, and we're just so honored to have been part of this and to also have received such accomplishments and accolades. Third place Middlesex County Academy Math Competition Individual Round, Pranav Sitaraman. <laughs> Second place, Middlesex County Academy Math Competition Live Team Round overall, Anag Sheep, Vendant Badoni, Bhavesh Man, Pranav Sitaram, Raghav Sharma. And first place, Middlesex County Academy Math Competition Team Round, Matil Mishra, Ishan Brahma, Krishiv Das, Siddhant Vishisht, and Girish Shabramani. Congratulations to all of you. We're so proud. Thank you, Ms. Valentine. And now the principal of J.P. Stevens High School, Ms. Gail Polakowski. Thank you, and congratulations to all the students, directors, and advisors being recognized this evening, and it is my privilege to announce the J.P. Stevens students. We'll start with our athletes. Congratulations to Coach Canova and the bowlers, receiving recognition for GMC All-White Division, Brian McAdams, GMC All-Conference, and GMC All-White Division, Ioana Hyman Cruz, and GMC All-Conference, GMC All-White Division, First Team All-State Selection, Cameron LaPlante. Congratulations to Coach Baguero and the J.P. Stephen Girls Varsity Swim Team. They are the GMC All-Red Division Champions. Congratulations. Receiving special rec recognition, all red division, Stephanie Chu, Shannon Yan, all conference, all red division, Cecilia Bailey, Ruth Bailey, Michelle Kong, GMC first place in the 100 breaststroke, all red division and all conference, Jenna Yan, GMC first place, 100 backstroke, all red division, all conference, Anush Rigate. <laughs> For the boys team, all red division, Nathan Zong, GMC first place 200, GMC first place 200 freestyle relay, all conference, all red division, Karen Wang, GMC first place 200 freestyle relay, all red division, all conference, Brendan Tang, Aris Chong, Nikita Kardashev. Congratulations to Coach Jacoby and the wrestling team. They received the GMC All Red Division Sportsmanship Award. Congratulations to them. Congratulations to Coach Ravito, Reed, Ozer, and Earl and the girls' winter track team. They also received the Red Division Sportsmanship Award. Congratulations. Congratulations to Ms. Paolello and the art teachers for the following awards. The Youth Arts Month Middlesex County Award winners, Kana Adachi, Anna Moskaleva, and Kenneth Pan. The Youth Arts State Award winner, Kana Adachi. The Youth Arts Merit Award at the national level, Young Ju Wan. The Middlesex County Teen Arts Festival Award winners, Kayla Chowdhury, Ethan Epstein, Miriam Kayser, Kenneth Pan, Mona Wu. And the Scholastic Arts and Writing Regional Award winners, Cynthia Cow, Kave Chowdhury, Cynthia Chen, Ethan Epstein, Kevin Gee, Anna Jang, Kenneth Pan, Arushi Parikh, Anushka Sandeep, Megan Tian, Youngju Wan, Allison Yu, Hannah Sang.
the Scholastic Arts and Writing National Award winners, Ethan Epstein, Anushka Sandeep, Youngju Wang. <laughs> Finalist in the state for Project Me With Three poster and a video contest, contest on Shkupta. And the State Teen Arts Festival Touring Exhibition Award, Kenneth Pan. Congratulations. Congratulations to choir director Mr. Lee and the following students selected to NJAJE Region 2 Jazz Choir, Vindanchi Sharma. The Chamber Ensemble won the Sing and Joy 2019 International Choral Competition for Mixed Choir. The A Cappello Ensemble won the Choral Competition for Youth Choir, and the A Cappello Ensemble came in second place in the Roxbury Choral Invitational. Congratulations to them. <laughs> NJMEA Young Composers Competition finalist, Varun Carey. And the Roxbury Choral Invitational Outstanding Achievement Award, Karina Melgar. <laughs> Congratulations to Dr. Verdi and the orchestra. Students earning NJMEA All-State Orchestra, Andrew Chung. <laughs> Congratulations to Mr. Di Nicola, Mr. Zazali, and the band. The NAFME All Eastern Band selection to Nitya Nadgir, Sinasai, Abhishek Taruve, Zoe Wang, Shivam Yadav, Matthew Liu, Brian Jang, Pranav Krishna, Christopher Shen. They are still on their trip, so unfortunately none of them could be here tonight. <laughs> Receiving all state honors, Nitya Nadgir, Nehar Chowdhury, Sin Sai, Arthur Ang, Derek Yu, Shivam Kamat, Abinar Yavetti, Hannah Zhang, Ruben Chang, Christopher Seau, Randeep Chahal, Himanshu Padankar, Suvan Sundaresh, Jada Kang, Ryan Hu, Zoe Wang, Matthew Liu, Brian Jiang, Shriyas Lagam, Samar Sitwala, Timothy Chen, Aditya Chakrabarti, Timothy Hu, Pranav Krishna, Christopher Shen, Shruti Tandon, Mayanik Palawal, Rishi Shah. This is the most from any school in the area. Congratulations. <laughs> Receiving the President's Volunteer Service Award, Sagar Patil. The J.P. Stevens Presidential Scholars, Samuel Chen, Roshan Settler, Garesh Ganasan, Akshay Khanna, Pranav Krishna, Stephanie Bahan, Allison Park, Arnav Patel. Congratulations. <laughs> and our National Merit Finalists, Kylan Bao, Stephanie Bahan, Sanjana Banashali, Aditya Bhattacharya, Dylan Chang, Samuel Chen, Nika Dublish, Emil Johnny, Nethra Jayaprakesh, Anna Jiang, Brian Jiang, Lakia Kolu, Calvin Lee, Matthew Liu, Karan Menon, Sharvani Pamaretti, Kenneth Pan, Allison Park, Arnav Patel, Priyan Selvakumar, Adrian Wang, Joshua Wang, Alex Shi. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Polakowski. And now uh, a man who needs no introduction, and I believe he's the principal of this school, Mr. Ross. Before I say hello out there in television land, my PTSO would be mad if I didn't make a plug. We, want every, we just had a great flea market this weekend. They do our honor roll breakfast and our project grad, and graduation signs are available on the website. I want to see all those young TJ and Hoover kids pre-order now, because I can't wait till you guys become <laughs> eagles and have those awards. 
Tonight we'd like to thank, first of all, it's, it's an honor to host such a great night to see so many different schools. What's great about Edison is just the hard work of the young people, the families that come together, and all the staff that helps make it happen. So thank you to the board. And now to get directly to what's great about EHS, I'm going to start off. He's got a tryout. He's got to move on. For the first team, all GMC, with Coach Vincent Mondano from Ice Hockey. And this is our group ice hockey team. It brings together not just Edison High, but Metuchen and J.P. Stevens. So there's a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of green, all in the same uniform. First team, all GMC, Mr. Christian Oswald. Next up, want to go all white division under Coach Charlie Moore from the boys basketball team, Mr. Tommy Johnson. <laughs> now the girls basketball team under white division coach of the year, Frankie Eckert, Edison High alum, got a lot of awards this year. The second, um, the second most wins, just 20, of any Edison basketball program, and also back-to-back -back county finalists. We want to give it up for first team all white division Danielle Marmol and first team all division all conference and our all time leading scorer. You can check the banner in the gym with 1,515 points, Samira Sargent. <laughs> for Coach Tracy Smith, recently inducted to the New Jersey Bowling Coaches Hall of Fame, let's give it up for first team all red division Wyatt Bucheney. And on the, on the other side of the bowling alleys would be the all-conference team and first team all-red division, Fabian Jean-Denis and Samantha Osiris. <laughs> Our track team over the winter put in a lot of work, starting to break down a lot of school records for Coach Joe Pitarisi for the GMC champion in the 1600 meter, Cynthia Berezny. Also, all white division, Cynthia Berezny, Casey Coletto, Gaia Theory Narayan, Lucas Corre, Amoresh Chittagiri, Humber Gresby, and Jason Moraz. Watch for Jason to pole vault over 13 feet this spring. And under Doreen Stocker, our librarian, third place co state competition, Battle of the Books, we have Ganeshwar Chandi, Deep Katara, Jeff Zhao, Shaji Prasad, Pavaganesh Kolasetti, Pranit Parachuri. Under our orchestra director, Ms. Brittany Leghorn, unable to make it here today because he's in a concerto competition for the New Jersey All-State Orchestra, CJMEA Region Orchestra, Johan Yu. <laughs> and out of our STEM Academy, want to give it up for Governor's School Award. They're going to be doing some research at Rutgers School of Engineering and Technology, Ms. Shruti Gard and Arvin Kruthiventi. Thank you, and I'll turn it over to the legend, Bob Pospecki. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ross. Um, I'm not a legend, but you guys are, so how about a round of applause for all the award winners tonight? <laughs> and I turn the program now over to Mr. Shi for a resolution. Before we uh, go to the resolution, I just want to congratulate all the students who are recognized tonight. So uh, can I ask all of you to uh, please stand up, all the students that got recognized tonight. Please stand up. Please turn around and find your parents and find your advisors. Please thank them. I'd like to congratulate all the staff, the advisors who helped these uh, students uh, making these achievements, and also like to congratulate all the parents for your commitment to your, uh, to your children. So, uh, we have a resolution, so Dan, can you please read the resolution? Be resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Edison Board of Education hereby recognize the outstanding efforts and accomplishments of the aforementioned students, 
and be it further resolved that the individual resolutions honoring each of the students be presented to the students. Okay, can I have a motion on that? Mr. Erico, second, uh, Ms., uh, Mrs. Con uh, Mrs. Conway. Dr. Chen? Yes. Mrs. Conway? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Mr. Brescher? Yes. Mr. Maroney? Yes. Mrs. Ward? Yes. Mr. Derrico? Yes. Mr. Shea? Yes. Well, yes. All right, so we're going to take a five minute break, then uh, we're going to go back to our normal programs. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we're going to resume our meeting. Uh, first, uh, we have the approval of the minutes, the March 7th, 20th, and 25th. Can I have a motion on that? Okay, Mrs. Maroney, can I have a second? Okay, Mr. Brescia. Dr. Chen? Yes. Mrs. Conway? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Mr. Brescia? Yes. Mrs. Peng? Yes. Mrs. Maroney? Yes. Mrs. Ward? Yes. Mr. Erico? Yes. Mr. Shea? Yes. All oh, yes. Now we open up for public comments on the resolutions only. Oh, I'm sorry, the, uh, we have the approval of the board secretary report, sorry. We should put it together, all right. So, uh, can I have a motion to approve the board secretary report? Okay, uh, Mrs. Wait, Patel. What was the motion? Board secretary report. To what? Board secretary. Excuse me. He did the minutes. Now oh, he, the minutes, now okay. Now we now didn't now. get to the resolutions. I thought he was using no, 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 okay. no, no. Right. I missed it once. <laughs> <laughs> so, can I have a second? Okay, Mr. Erico, Board of Secretary report. Dr. Chen? Yes. Mrs. Conway? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Mr. Brescher? Yes. Mrs. Peng? Yes. Mrs. Maroney? Yes. Mrs. Ward? Yes. Mr. Erico? Yes. Mr. Shi? Yes. Well, yes. All right, now we're open up for public comments on resolutions only. Anybody? Public comments on resolutions only. See none. Any board members on resolutions? Resolution. Yes, I do. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I would like to speak about the shared services Mitch, agreement. Mitch. Yeah, go. I'm sorry. I would like to speak about the shared services agreement. The Leo three officers who are defined as retired police officers will be employed by the township under the direction of the chief of police. The number now stands at 20. Their assignments will be administered by the procedures set forth in the third party agreement between the township and an entity named off-duty management systems according to their procedures. The township will make a reasonable attempt to provide adequate manpower subject to availability of qualified SLEO 3 officers. Our 19 public schools will be covered by a plan which calls for 84 hours per day. That's an average of four hours per school and to include the after care program. Now the average four hours per day included in the uh, after school program which is a township program, not Board of Education. So not only will we be paying for police coverage for a township program, but the four hours per day school coverage will be reduced significantly. Any school days over 180 is subject to further agreement. There is no accounting for any after school activities which are legion Specific hours are not mentioned. The township has full discretion to manage the SLEO 3 program. We will be provided with the identity of the officers and the superintendent will consult with the chief of police if he wants the removal of or transfer of any officer. The Board of Education will cover all expenses upon monthly billing for the township's hiring, supervising and equipping SLEO 3s to include background checks, medical clearance, psychological testing, certification of the officers with the Police Training Commission, and the administration of pay for the 20 officers. 
The Board of Education will cover all expenses upon monthly billing for training, firearms training and qualification, use of force training, and all other applicable or required training and general compliance. The Board of Education will pay for departmental training for each officer, which must be completed prior to the officer entering the schools, and pay for each SLEO 3 to attend a state-mandated school resource officer course after being hired. The Board of Education shall reimburse the township for officer's uniforms, duty belts, holsters, magazines, pouches, handcuffs, handcuff cases, ballistic vests, ammunition, and weapons maintenance. The township will use existing available weapons. However, it's hardly likely they will give up their reserves when they can tap the cash cow over on Pearson Avenue. The Board of Education will purchase and maintain 20 portable radios and assumes responsibility to arrange for and pay for all startup programming, connection with the Edison Township radio system, and monthly costs. All of the above costs the board will pay for, including any and all stated and reasonably anticipated costs associated with police school security, changes in purchasing laws or rules, fair market valuations, quoted prices, state contract pricing, and increasing in, increases in officers' compensation. The board will reimburse the township for the purchase of four 2019-40 fusions, that's four fully equipped police cars. Now let's talk costs. The Board of Education will maintain a $200,000 <coughs> escrow account fully funded for the school year, paying zero interest. Since the Board of Education is billed by the township monthly, with terms net 30 days, it's hardly likely that any of the $200,000 will be needed by the township. If we don't pay within 90 days, the township reserves the right to suspend services. So much for school security. All township monthly billing will include a 10% management fee for the township. The extra duty solutions vendor fee, that's the third party, handling compensation at $32 per hour, will charge an additional 7.75% on payrolls. However, the 7.75 charge is based on the $32 per hour plus the 10% township management fee giving them an effective rate of 8.53%. As noted above, the Board of Education will also pay for police coverage of the township's after-school program at the same rate. Officers will clock in and out at the police station, so we are paying for time to and from work and the hourly rate plus 10% plus 8.53% for them to be transported in the four police cars paid for by the Board of Education. In the event the agreement is terminated, the four police cars will be the property of the Board of Education. The cost of the original December 218 proposed agreement, this is the third agreement, proposed agreement, the, the first one was $8.3 million. On January 17th, we were informed that there would be an additional cost for police security of $7,208. The next estimate came through at $1,050,720, followed by a reduction to $800,000. The overall cost has been reduced as some of the over-the-top items and conditions were pared down, 
and now it is back to $1 million, even with the paring down. To be truthful, no one knows how much this will cost the board, as every item we pay for has costs that are open-ended, and costs, salaries included, never go down. Now let's talk third party. One of the third parties to this agreement is referred to alternately as off-duty, extra-duty management systems, off-duty management systems. I asked who is this party with whom the township has the agreement. There is no name to which we can pinpoint. I was told they have been handling extra-duty police work for about two years. We have had an experience or two within that time. Last year on primary day, with our schools wide open and voting areas being used as a pass-through for any and all com comers, I called the township to find out why we had no police presence. I was told it was the police department. Uh, the police department said it was the contracted provider. I asked for the name and phone number of someone I could speak to, and the person could not provide it. Additionally, our athletic events, at our athletic events, police have been paid a flat fee of $125 per game with no fee to the township or third party. Now they are paid an hourly rate of $50 for a minimum of three hours, plus 10% to the township and 7.75% for the extra duty management solutions, driving the cost up to $176.64 for the minimum three hours. We have no recourse but to pay these rates dictated by an agreement over which we have no control. I asked again at our finance and facilities meeting who or what is this management solutions, and I still don't know. The distancing goes for all parties mentioned in this contract. Police compensation rates, SLEO 3 special police officers, the memorandum of agreement, the Edison Police SLEO 3 policy, the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office policy, the Attorney General Guidelines, Off-Duty Management Agreement, and this shared agreement itself are police contact, contracts. The Board of Education has had little or no input. When I read the first of the three shared agreements in December, I asked what board members were on the committee. I'm sorry, on the committee, the answer was none. We have since had four members sit in, but the third agreement is basically the same as the first with some reductions in numbers. Now let's talk radios. At the time of the original December agreement, there was a problem with SRO communications and a cradle point router. We were told in January that there would be an additional $1,500 cost and three weeks to implement the system. Three months later, discussing number three proposed agreement, the radio problem still exists, but we should still go ahead and pay for radios and sign the agreement without adequate communications. Not a good idea. In fact, this whole debacle is a fool's errand. So much time has been wasted but let's not waste our education dollars. In February, the legislature gave final approval to a law which will require all New Jersey's public schools to install silent panic alarms to alert police, local police, during emergencies. The funds will come from the $500 million school improvement bond issue approved in November. This is a step in the right direction, and silent panic alarms will fit in with our original security plan. And I'm going to give you a refresher on that plan. 
The original plan was the Edison Police Department and the Edison Board of Education joined forces and wisely put together and executed a plan for school safety that involved numbering every door and room having exterior visibility. These numbers are large and clearly visible from the outside. Every police cruiser had the floor plan and exterior layout of each one of our buildings with the locations of the numbered glass. The police toured all the buildings to be familiar with the locations, hallways, and entrances and exits from the inside and outside to facilitate response. We were assured that police would respond within three minutes, followed by fire, emergency vehicles, and state police and helicopters. The police officers would be trained and in turn train our personnel on the split second action to be taken according to the latest protocol, guidelines, and directives. To the best of my knowledge, the Board of Education and the police still have that plan in place as we have never discarded it. All of our actions have been directed toward improving that plan. For example, bulletproof glass, double locks on classrooms, and 15 additional security guards. The Board of Education would be responsible for the internal security and the police would continue to provide protection 24-7 for the people in the township, which includes school students and staff. This appeared to all to be a sane, efficient, affordable, practical response to which there are clear lines of responsibility and authority. That was our original plan. All right. Our immediate needs are not for the police in the schools, owners of ownership of police cars, depending, dependent on outlying agreements, or to be weighted down under the terms and conditions that are not of our making. This is not a, a scintilla, there is not a scintilla of evidence that the students and the teachers are safer under this agreement than under our original plan. Last month, we heard about staffing needs in one of our schools. Last week, Mrs. Maroney pointed out the workload of our school nurses. We have one school nurse that's certified, registered, and LPNs for every 620 students. We have buildings to maintain and build, buses to purchase, our own agreements to enter into, and a myriad of ways to spend a million dollars. We still need police for security and the township for their favorable land, housing, and ordinance decision. And it is imperative that we all work voluntarily and independently to enhance the safety and integrity of our schools and community. This agreement is a showcase police contract that is a nascent, intrusive, and expensive one way in and no way out whole. There's a history lesson here also. Once you have relinquished your rights and your autonomy, you are hard put to get them back, particularly when you have to buck statutory power. Agreements are easy to enter and difficult to exit. We've been trying it with us, New Jersey School Business Association, and then we always have Brexit. After three tries, the shared services agreements is still a bad idea for the Edison Board of Education, and there is no way it should be memorialized. Let us go back to the original plan and work from there. I believe this vote, board should vote no on this agreement and get it off the table. Barring that, 
The agreement should be tabled until it is discussed by the full board. Thank you, Mr. Sheen. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Moroni. First of all, um, I would like to commend uh, Mrs. Ward for that very thorough report. And in all her years on the Board of Education, you can always trust Teresa to dig in and take the time to do her homework. So thank you, Teresa, for that really excellent report. The second thing I wanted to uh, speak about was the insurance situation. And tonight we will be uh, voting on rehiring the broker of record. Uh, a year ago, I expressed my concerns about hiring that broker because I did not feel that that particular company had the strength to handle a district the size of Edison. I am going to stand by that statement because this year has been a disaster, as we know it, with insurance. And I have heard board members say, well, you know, if the broker's trying, and you know, the, they're really working hard at this, but have you seen a change? Because I sure haven't. And I haven't stopped hearing about it. And now, all right, so there's an RFP out to get another insurance company. Do the teachers out there, and the paras out there, and the uh, custodians out there, and the administrators out there, do all of you want to change insurance yet again this year, and then probably again next year? Uh, I, I think this is a problem with the broker, and I really feel that we should vote no on that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Shee. Uh, in reference to the SLEOs and this contract, this is something I've been pushing for for over, I don't know, since the Parkland uh, catastrophe and, and disaster down in Florida. We need armed police officers in our building. I would like to thank Mr. Shee. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Brusher. Uh, and all the uh, committee and working with the township. This has taken a lot longer than I expected, but this is something we need, and I don't think we could have put a price tag on the safety or the lives of our students or staff, so I'll be voting yes for this agreement. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. See no? Uh, let's go through it. So first up is the personnel report. Do I have a motion on that? Personnel report, okay. Mr. Arico, second. Okay, Mr. Patel, personnel report only. Dr. Chen? Yes. Mrs. Conway? Yes, on everything except for the supervisor of special services. Mr. Patel? Yes. Mr. Brescher? Uh, yes. Mrs. Peng? Yes. Mrs. Maroney? Yes. Mrs. Ward? Are we down to this section with the shared? No. Over no. Up there? Just okay. personnel. Yes. Yes. Mr. Erico? Yes. Mr. Shea? Yes. So carried. So next up, the remaining of the items, uh, administration including the appointment of a broker record, the revised school calendar, the settlement agreement, share service agreement, national school, school nurse day, uh, the curriculum, uh, we're going to vote on the uh, revised grouping procedure for the next school year, the textbook approval, field trip approval, uh, professional development, uh, out of district placement, and the finance resolutions. So everything else, um, you know, from administration to curriculum to pupil services and finance. Can I have a, a motion on that? Okay, Mrs. Maroney, uh, Mr. Arico. Dr. Chen? Yes. Mrs. Conway? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Mr. Brusher? Yes. Mrs. Peng? Yes. Ms. Maroney? Um, yes on everything except the broker and the shared services agreement. Uh, Mrs. Ward? Yes on everything except the shared services agreement. Ms. Derrico? Yes. Mr. Shea? Yes. So carried. So move up, uh, we're gonna have the uh, three committee reports. Finance Facility uh, Committee, Mr. Brescia. We had a Finance and Facilities Committee meeting on 4-9-19 at 4 p.m. 
at the Education Center. In attendance was Jerry Shi, Teresa Ward, Richard Brescher, Una Chen, Paul Saxon, Dan Michaud, and Ken Taylor. Scott Celine and Jessica Foley from WISC Company reviewed the preliminary findings from the performance audit. The final report will be presented at a future meeting. Sean Kagan and Kevin Dunshee from Solar Landscape discussed the possibility of installing solar panels in some of our schools. They would be provided at no cost to the district, and then they would sell the generated electric back to Edison at a reduced rate to the district. Bob Burswasher from Carlisle Roofing and Foam Coating discussed a different type of roofing option a sprayed on foam instead of a traditional built up roofing system. Mr. Brazo will meet with the director, the district's roofing architect, Tom Rienzi, at the four schools scheduled to have roofing sections replaced this summer. They will determine whether the foam option is viable and whether the district could save money with the new foam roofing system. Mr. Michaud discussed the need to submit the roofing projects. Submit the roofing projects to the New Jersey Department of Education for approval, regardless of the roofing system we use. The board will be asked to approve the submittal at their 4-15-19 meeting, which is tonight. The Assistant Superintendent, Christopher Conklin, discussed the state's current preschool grant funding. He determined that it would not benefit the district at this time. The District Safety and Security Director, Patrick Cassane, discussed the SLEO 3 contract between the Township and the Board of Education that would provide armed retired police officers in the schools for security. And the committee discussed the terms of the agreement. Mr. Cassane also discussed the school mapping system along with the visitor emergency management system that he recommended to bolster the district's security efforts. The committee will review the proposals and discuss further at a later date. The committee also discussed the 2019-2020 school budget and recommended some additional reductions to the expenditures. The new budget cuts will be reflected in the budget documents presented at the May 6th budget hearing. The meeting adjourned at 9.03 p.m. Thank you. That's probably the longest um, committee meeting with a five-hour meeting. That's a five-hour meeting. Yes. No break. <laughs> So next up, we have the Transportation Committee. Mr. Brescher again. Oh wait, we post. Yeah, we postponed that till uh, Wednesday. Right. No, but, uh, oh, that's why I don't see the. That's minutes. why I have no minutes. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, the Curriculum and Technology Committee, Mrs. Pan. Yeah, the CTC committee um, met on Tuesday, April 2nd, 2019. Um, Dr. Chen, Ms. Conway, Ms. Maroney, and myself, and Ms. Gulick attended the meeting. During the meeting, members of the committee reviewed the feedback from parents on the most recently proposed draft of the grouping procedure for the 1920 school year and um, future placement criteria. Additional meetings were held previously on February 8th, March 12th, and March 19th, uh, at which we gathered information, met with teachers and supervisors, and uh, considered uh, the alternatives. Um, the CDC also reviewed textbooks for English language arts for grade one through five. The proposed text series include teacher support materials and classroom libraries. Also reviewed are the middle school math textbook for grades six, seven, eight, except for algebra and geometry. The series also include hardcover text and online resources. Uh, we also reviewed biology textbook with online resources and AP physics textbook with online, re online access. Um, we already approved two of these uh, books, this biology textbook and AP physics textbooks. We're going to continue um, Discuss discussion on the English language arts for grades th one through five and the middle school math textbook. Um, CTC can also review the Camp Burning Field trip to consider possible alternatives to the trip, which is becoming increasingly difficult to support. Um, the meeting adjourned about two o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. 
So the announcement of the upcoming meetings, um, we have a special meeting uh, 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 for budget hearing, which is scheduled on May 6th at 7 o'clock in the Education Center. Uh, the next caucus meeting is May 15th in the S Center. The, f the public meeting is May 20th in J.P. Stevens. And also at the last meeting, as I, I mentioned that uh, given the uh, insurance situation, we might need a special meeting before the, uh, um, the budget hearing meeting so we can get the, um, the insurance thing to, to go along. Just keep that in mind. And uh, we don't know, um, you know when the meeting is going to be. I uh, just have to see what the, um, uh, when the, uh, the proposal comes in. Okay? So keep that in mind. All right, so we are open for board member comments. Okay, Mrs. Conway. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shi. I was uh, elected to the board and sworn in in January, and one of my uh, assigned jobs was to be the chairperson of the Food Service Committee. At that point, I really didn't know much about the Food Service Committee, but I'm not the uh, type of person that doesn't just jump in and make decisions hastily. I did a lot of investigation. I did a lot of uh, surveying students and speaking to principals and conferring and always allowing my committee members an update of what was going on with the Food Service. Uh, we also, at times, met with uh, alternative companies for the food service program to see if we were getting the best for our money and the best food possible within the regulations of the federal government. And at that time, I felt and I shared with my committee members and anyone that would listen that I felt at this point in time we should uh, actually stay with the company that we are working with right now, Chartwells, because with so many other things that the board has to deal with, I think adding another RFP to our plate is just overstepping any necessity. So I'm uh, pleading to the board that we have many other more important items to discuss, especially uh, a quarter of a billion dollar budget that needs to be taken care of and many uh, different consequences that we are worried about for the board. I don't think food service should be uh, another item on our plate. And I would really consider um, the board members to think about it, but ultimately it's up to the board to make that final decision. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shi, one question before I go into uh, uh, an event I want to go. Um, what, what's the latest update on the superintendent search and the company we hired? So um, I think it was a Thursday then, correct me if I'm right? Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday evening, four. Four, um, we uh, uh, finalized the agreement. We sent it to them. And uh, we have been communicating with them. Uh, the company will come into the um, um, personnel committee. On, on this Wednesday. Oh, this Wednesday, so the day okay. after tomorrow, okay. they will be coming here and talk to us about the, oh. uh, the super search. Good, perfect. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Shee. Um, I attended a wonderful event right here in this gym and in the cafeteria this past Saturday evening. It was the uh, 2019 Edison Scott, uh, School Hall of Fame dinner and event. And it's something that's been long overdue that I've been pushing since I've been elected to the board to get done and didn't have the cooperation, but thanks to Mr. Saxton, uh, Mr. Ross, and especially a big thank you to Mr. Dave Sandell, who took it upon himself to get this committee up and running again and going through all the applicants with his committee and electing 13 Hall of Fame uh, athletic members. Um, some of the stories were amazing. It was a four hour event, um, you know, brought us back to way back. But I just wanted to mention a, a big thank you to all those people. And I just wanted to shout out to the people that made the Hall of Fame. Uh, Albert Jackson, Rashid Simmons, Ken Bierenson, Rushdie Swartz, Kerry Schutz, Pete Ulysses, John Schrober, Bob Coward, Joe Lynch, Bobby Brownlee, Debbie Mady, 
Joe Duhigg, and Ken Bagash. It was a great event. Thank you, Mr. Shee. Okay, thank you. Other board members? Yes, this is one. Yeah. Uh, the Lindenor School um, the Teachers Dine Out Night is this Wednesday, April 17th at the newly renovated McDonald's on Route 27. To add to Mr. Shee's report on Lindenor's career day, uh, I just want, to know, want you to note that there were 17 careers represented that the presentations I went to, school service, service dog trainer and maintenance tech for Delta Airlines were well received by the student. The fact that 17 people gave their time for back-to-back -back presentations is commendable and just wanna let them know that they are appreciated. Also, thousands of students across the state participated in this year's National Geographic Bee at Rowan University. Edison was lucky to have four amazing students participate. Michael Liang from MLK, Arnika Gars from Woodrow Wilson, Adrija Kundu from John Adams, and Karthik Praniti from Thomas Jefferson. Congratulations to all, especially to Karthnik for his third place win. And I do want to follow up on Vicki Jenkins' dance concert at Edison High School. I was serious when I said that music and dance are lifelong activities, and our students go to proms, weddings, family religious celebrations, and business functions without the confidence they possibly could have obtained from lessons in social dancing. So I'm going to push for social dancing in one unit, in some course. Thank you very much, Mr. Shee. Thank you, and please let me know. I'll sign up for that class. Okay. <laughs> My husband and I took a dancing course because we were going to bar mitzvahs and weddings, and uh, so we took I, a dance. I would love to. We say. took dancing lessons one okay. time, and you know, this adds to the quality of life. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody else? Okay, then you can have the other one. You oh, can okay. wallpaper your yeah, bathroom. Mr. Patel. <laughs> yes. Um, over the last few meetings, we had a very healthy discussion regarding the placement rubric. I just want to encourage parents to stay involved in the process all year long. Um, your input is heard, so I just want to encourage that. And then I furthermore wanted to congratulate uh, Christine Cafe, who is a Spanish teacher at J.P. Stevens, who was named the 2019 Teacher of the Year by the Foreign Language Educators of New Jersey. So I um, just wanted to give her a little shout out. Thank you. Yes. Um, sorry, two quick things. Uh, thank you to uh, Ramon and Hope for getting this Sliwa contract uh, done. And I don't know how many revisions we did, but we did many. And also that Ms. Patel mentioned the, uh, the committee, uh, the CTC. Uh, thank you, Ms. Pang, for the hard work with our committee members uh, to getting this done. Um, I don't know how many hours you spent on this. A gazillion. A gazillion. So thank you very much, Ms. Payne, <laughs> and committee members. All right. Any other board members? Okay. I just want to have a shout out to the uh, Lina Now School. The Lina Now participated in the Battle of the Books tournament against James Monroe this morning. And their fifth grader, the uh, Book Monster team, okay, there, there are four, four teams. There are two teams from each, each school. James Monroe has a team called Book Warrior, and the other one I couldn't see. And Linda Nell has the two clubs, uh, two teams, one's Untouchable and the Book Monster, okay? The Book Monster um, team won the tournament, and um, uh, all the students did a great job at both schools, so uh, very proud of, uh, you know, the, these fifth graders from both schools. So shout out to the uh, um, Linda Nell staff, teachers, teachers, and all the students. Thank you. All right, now we open up for public comments. Anybody, public comments? Okay. I think I gave you my copy as well as yours. Carol Badowski, 39 Jonathan Drive. Student recognition nights have always been my very favorite Board of Ed meetings for many years. They never fail to disappoint me. 
So I'd like to say congratulations, although they're not here now, maybe they'll hear this on television, to all of our amazing students. I clapped for every one of them. My hands are sore, but I'll be brief. Their accomplishments are overwhelming. I'd like to thank, give a thank you to the students, also their parents and their teachers, for making our whole district look so good. But I would also like to mention some others who have made our district look highly effective and provide nothing less than excellence for many years, too. We have a dozen retiring educators this month alone. I'd like to wish them all well and give them a huge thank you for their service to our students, our schools, and our community. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comments? Just Joe? Well, everybody will have, we'll have a chance. Yeah. Uh, Joseph Johnson, 407 Durham Avenue. I love my town of Edison. I love my Board of Education, and I love my town council. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. On April 6, 2019, the Lena Harris Foundation hosted its first inaugural scholarship and awards luncheon held at the YMCA JCC in Edison, New Jersey. Our keynote speakers included Edison Councilman Sam Joshi, Mayor Tony Versigliano of Edison, New Jersey, and Middlesex County Superintendent, Mr. Kyle Anderson of Woodbridge, New Jersey. We want to send a huge thank you to our special guests, which included many of our Edu Board of Education members. Mrs. Falgany Patel, Mr. Richard Brescher, Mrs. Teresa Ward, Mrs. Elizabeth Conway, Mrs. Beth Maroney, and a huge thank you to our J.P. Stevens High School administration and staff, Ms. Gail Polakowski and Mr. Robert Urbanovich. We also had some other special guests come, including Edison Democratic Organization Chairman, Sherrick Ahmad, East Brunswick Mayor, Brad Cohen, Bishop Donald Hilliard Jr. of Cathedral International, and Edison 73rd District Committee people, Don and Lois Tarr. A special congratulations to our scholarship recipients, which include Devon Pinder of South Plainfield High School, Leah Hayes of Plainfield High School, McRae and Kelly Fack of Plainfield High School, and Karen LeBron Ramos of Rawway High School. The Lena Harris Foundation is truly honored to serve the community. Thank you all so very much, and together we can make Edison stronger. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Anthony. Uh, Anthony D'Amron, 15 Red Axe Circle. Um, you know, when I, when I come to these board meetings, sometimes I'll disagree and I'll let my, you know, I'll make the case against why I disagree. When I agree, I give credit where credit is due. And for example, I believe that the zoning board is completely out of control. And I believe it's long overdue that they're held accountable and somebody's held responsible. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think it necessarily ends there. And what I mean by that is when you get comments and statements from people like from our DPW director, who is basically the mayor's right hand man, who basically puts the blame right at you, Mr. Shea, and this board for not keeping up with the growth of this town. It's delusional in my opinion, it really is, with all due respect, that he believes this. But it's important though to realize that we, we, must, we, must, we must go about this a different way going forward because you can't just have lawsuits going out right and left. It costs the taxpayer a lot of money for doing that. So my suggestion would be is any time going forward that any one of these branches of governments, because there's a, there's, a, there's a complete disconnect in terms of the board, the mayor's office, uh, this council, so on and so forth. So anytime one of these entities starts to go rogue, call them out behind that microphone. Call them out and try to bring them back in and explain to the public why it is that you're calling them out. And believe me, it will work. What we will do in, in, in essence is you will allow the public, you'll educate the public on why these, whomever you're calling out, maybe if it's a zoning board um, regarding building in town or if it's the mayor's office for not being involved more in the overcrowding, 
You'll explain to the public, and the public will help make your case. Believe me, you will have support, Mr. Shea. You will have support behind that. Thank you. And I think it's important because, again, it will save the tax, because right now the perception is out there is that the, 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 the lawsuit will, is, is a waste of taxpayer money, because I don't think the public is that informed right now of, of to what the real problem is. And they're becoming informed. But I just want to let you know that by calling and mentioning these people by name is, believe it or not, people will support you on this. And, uh, and I think it will help the board out and it'll help our town out. And all these, because every single part of our government need to work together. It's, it's so essential that that happens because we all, it, it's just, it's, it's the key, it's the, it's the key to everything, basically. So I just wanted to make that known. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I? Yes. Can I respond? Yeah. I, I thank you for coming up. And it, there was some research, I guess, that I've been doing because this is kind of taken off a little bit here. But everybody has heard our demographer. And you'll hear the zoning board talk about the demographers that come in and talk about how many children come for each one of the homes. What they normally talk about is it's about a 20% number. So if you have 100 homes, they project that you're going to have 20 students. And at our board meeting, we made a point of asking whether that was true for Edison. And I, I went and I did a little analysis. I, I mean, everybody here knows on the corner of Grove and New Dover, we just built four homes. You can classify them as McMansions. Those homes generate $86,000 to Edison in taxes, but each home has a child. So we built four homes and we have four children. That's 100%, that's not 20% like the demographers told us, that's 100%. So, the cost to educate the children in those homes costs us $60,000. The Board of Education receives $47,000 from all four homes. When you take that and you go into these multi-unit developments, and you could look at like a Rivendell or a Blueberry, they're, they're large developments that we have. Those have over 500 and something units in them. We have 330 children coming from each one of those. I mean, you're talking about a 50 to 60%, not 20. So the numbers that they project to us are wrong. Those numbers are just an average through the state. We're at the top end of that. And unless the zoning board and the township realize this, we're not gonna get anywhere. We're just gonna continue to be overcrowded. There are things that we can do, and I have brought it to our council members, and I've done it over the last year or so, and nothing has happened. There are things that can be done, such as you can do a, a moratorium on demolition, which slows down the building process, or a moratorium on building altogether for six months we could get, which would really help the Board of Education if we could get six months worth of breathing, breathing room where we're not developing. Other towns, like Carteret, they have impact fees. Those fees are basically a tax on new development, new buildings that are built, and then it goes to pay for infrastructure, such as sewers or schools. We don't do that here in Edison. What we do here in Edison is we give the tax breaks to the developers and we saddle all the taxpayers with this and we're funding the developers. So, you know what, Anthony, I, I appreciate what you said and I'd like everybody here to go to their council and ask them to stop giving these tax breaks to the developers, let them pay their fair share, and let's get our schools done. Okay, thank you. So um, I, I just want to respond to, the, to some of this as well. So um, just give an example. Um, let's say you have a home, let's say simple calculation, uh, $20,000 property tax. It's a pretty big home, right? And um, school district takes about 56% of the property tax. Let's just make it a simple 60%, make it easy, right? So 20,000, the school district get $12,000 tax. You know how much it costs to educate one kid in Edison School District? Part 14,000, okay? So yeah, we, we, we get more tax, but if the kid comes in, you know, if you have two kids, about 12,000, okay, that's the dad's calculation, he, he deletes some other stuff, so it's 12,000, okay? But if you have two kids, we're on a losing end, right? Um, and 
we talked about the um, one other example is the the uh, apartments at the end of Jackson near Herbert Hoover. Uh, when our demography um, consultant went over to the to the township, uh, they talked about that apartment, and I think that at meeting we were told most of the people will be 55 and older. Okay, and now when I look at the report, they're building playgrounds. Obviously, they have kids. <laughs> Much younger than that, okay? 220 units. And, um, you know, yeah, those, the, the, the particular that we're, we are, we're suing the, the, uh, the, the zoning board is at Harding Avenue. Uh, three bedroom apartments, eight of them. The projection is two kids. I want to see that that is true. So, you know, do we really want to, to, to uh, file lawsuits? No, we don't. But, we have, we are left with no choices, right? Me and Brescher, uh, Mr. Brescher, we went to some of the, the township meetings and we were told, you're not really welcome here, okay? Uh, we don't want you guys to come here in the public, start criticizing, you know, all these departments, let's have conversations. So we did have committees, we did have, um, you know, discussions, but nothing has been, you know, accomplished. And meanwhile, we'll continue to see these approvals moving forward. So it's, it's, it's really sad that we, we have to go to this legal route, but the problem is we don't have a lot of choices. You know, the, the other example is that um, the zoning board um, meetings, uh, we had probably 100 residents went to the zoning board meeting uh, to talk about the Harding Avenue project. Um, you know, they were there from 7 to 11 o'clock. Basically, they were begging them. Begging them not to approve it. But you know what? At the end of the day, still five votes, it went through. You know, yeah, I can go there and, and make, the, make the plea. Uh, maybe I'm a school board president. I have a, a little bit more weight, which, which is, should not be. I should be treated as every single resident in the town. You know, I, you know, I'm just going to be like one of those beggars who's going to stand there and continue to beg. The result is going to be the same. So that's why we had we had no choice but to go this option, which is, you know, unfortunately. But we we hope that, uh, you know, this is a awakening call to some of the uh, uh, the boards in the in the township, and the school board is is more than willing to sit down and work with anybody over there. Uh, let's you know solve the problem. You know, the, the problem is subdivide, right? If you do a one-on-one, -on -one, it might be not that bad, but the subdivision and the countless of, you know, uh, getting open land to, to the developer and build these, uh, you know, mega houses, um, which is, we can't, the school board, the school district just cannot absorb all these students. That's why, you know, the, the last resort is, was the lawsuit. Thank you for the understanding. Any other comments? Yes. Yes. Good evening. Joan Rosen, 19 Place, Edison. I was one of those hundreds of residents who stood there and listened for hours and hours to the zoning board, um, listened to them, but they did not listen to us. And I want to say thank you. I've been a teacher since 1986. I raised two children who went to the Edison schools. And knowing the quality of the Edison schools, for them to think that they are going to build eight three-bedroom units and not attract families with children to the Edison schools is just ridiculous. And um, at least someone is listening to us now, and I thank you. Um, I hope that you have much more success than we did because we tried. We tried many times. We listened to their testimony and we tried to um, refute it, rebut it, and to no avail. Um, they actually were disrespectful to us at times. Um, they did things that they told us we couldn't do. Um, and so thank you again. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just, <laughs> Mr. Erico just re reminded me. Actually, that was voted down once, and the person it was a five. What is a five to two vote? Five to three, and the, they kicked him out. Okay, he's the one who voted them down. He's the yeah. fifth vote. We, we, we know exactly who voted what. <laughs> okay. Yes. Sorry. 
Good evening, Judy McQuillan, 2 Ethel Road. If, if you recall, in February I came to the podium and I spoke about accountability. Um, since then, there have been no changes, um, and the board is well aware of all of the issues that we are having with uh, our medical benefits. So I want to ask you, Jerry, we talked about penalties, that $330,000 mm -hmm. that um, Cigna said they were going to pay if they did not have higher standards of performance. Do we have a list of criteria on what, we, what the board thinks good, good performance is? Because as you all know, we have not been getting the services that we're being, that we're being charged for. Do we have a list? Yes. Yes. Is there a way that we can look at some of these items on the list? Because even if we change insurance companies, we're still going to have to have criteria, performance criteria, and we need to know exactly what are we looking at because we really need to hold the medical industry accountable. I agree with you. That being said, I'd like to tell you a very quick little story. Bear with me. On Friday, I was homesick. So I had bronchitis and I have sinusitis. My doctor, of course, is not in on Friday, so I went down the road less than half a mile away to my medical emergency center that I have been using for 22 years. They have all my medical records. I walk in and the receptionist says, sorry, Judy, we're out of network. I said, okay, so what does that mean? Don't worry, it's not gonna cost you more than $150. Well, this is not acceptable, so I left. I went home, half a mile away. I called Cigna. I explained to Cigna that I've already met and exceeded my maximum out-of-pocket deductibles for out-of-network. And on our card, it says 0% for um, urgent care. So I asked them to explain that to me. And it's 0% coinsurance for out-of-network. I said, great, I've already exceeded my maximum out-of-network, so can I, in fact, go down the road a half a mile away? They have all my records. Well, it's not exactly 0%, they tell me. But this is customer service. I said, well, what does that mean? Well, if Cigna says we're gonna pay $100, and your doctor at the urgent care says it's 150, you are responsible for the additional $50. This is not acceptable to me. I've already exceeded my maximum out of pocket uh, deductible for out of network. So my choices were go home, go through the list of all of the urgent cares in my neighborhood, get something else, go to the hospital for 50 bucks, take my chances that this out of network wouldn't really cost me a lot of money. So what I did is I went to the nearest urgent care, 16 miles away from my house. This took me over four and a half hours to get a lousy prescription and a doctor's visit for bronchitis and sinusitis. I only tell this story because think about all the people who are fighting for, um, because they're not getting, they're getting their services denied for speech, OTPT. You know what we're fighting for. So I would like to bring back the um, point that I originally brought up, accountability. Now at Wednesday's meeting, you said that Alamo was going to go out to the four big players and they're gonna get quotes yes. from these players. Yes. After the quotes are in, Cigna will have a chance to um, it's a courtesy. renegotiate, to give us another quote. Yes. And that's fine, but what I'm here to ask you tonight is, when you look at all the quotes that come in, please don't go with the cheapest quote. Go with the, the company that is going to provide the 2,200 people that are employed in this district 
with good medical benefits, we are paying $40 million for medical benefits and our services are being totally denied over and over. So when you look at all of the quotes that come in, please look at the one that will restore productivity to this district. Because of the stress that we are being put through, because of all the phone calls, all of the denials, walking around because we're denied for tests and services, just when you look at all those quotes, please, please go with the one that's going to give us the best services, not the cheapest rates. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Points taken. So um, I just want to uh, let you guys know that uh, the um, Alamo went out to uh, these companies. Um, Incumbent Cigna, Horizon, Aetna, uh, AmeriHealth, and United Oxford. They went to all these for medical prescription and dental. They also went to ask for quote for Banicard, Express Scripts, and Maxer for prescription. On the dental part, they also they went to four carriers, Delta Dental, MetLife, Guardian, and uh, UNUM, UNUM for these um, um, quotes. So on the 19th, we will be receiving quotes from all these vendors, and uh, we're going to study them uh, thoroughly. And uh, the, the points is well taken, so we'll consider that when we pick the, uh, the insurance carriers. Yes. Matt Revnack, Vice President, ETA, 2 Ethel Road. Uh, a couple things. Number one, Mrs. Ward, thank you for your presentation before. It was very enlightening. And Mrs. Maroney, for your words about the Alamo Cigna situation as well. Um, I just want to mention a few things. Um, number one, going back to the nurses, you know, we're talking about safety, and I believe in safety as a priority. However, one of the things is the nurses. I mean, to have one nurse for, I didn't realize it was 850 people, students, et cetera. That doesn't even include, I guess, staff involved with that. That's very dangerous. God forbid one kid has one sort of medical tragedy going on in a school with one nurse. Who's going to attend to someone else that may have a situation that comes up? So it's really something. I know even in negotiations, we tried to help out. I know it came up. I know it's been difficult. But I don't know what we can do. But we got to try to, do, to try to improve the staff in that situation, because it really is a medical necessity. Um, the other thing I did want to mention and jump on, you know, some of the things that Judy mentioned. Quite honestly, Cigna has been a nightmare, and it continues to be a nightmare. I happened to, at 5.30 this morning as I was driving to work, I happened to hear on the news that John Bramnick is actually proposing a bill, I don't know if you heard about it yet, that's going to disallow insurance companies to refuse a doctor's prescription on things like MRIs, CAT scans and things like that. Exactly the situation we're going through with Cigna. In fact, the first thought I had was, he must have Cigna and has gotten screwed over by Cigna as well. <laughs> it's, you know, 5.30 this morning. So anyway, you know, these things, it continues to be a nightmare. You know, there's a lot of things going on. Again, people don't, I personally had a situation with it. A couple weeks ago, we had the Optical Academy here for eyeglassware, okay? The representative from Optical Academy, when I sat down with them, actually got on the phone with Cigna. They said they refused to really talk to her, was very rude to her, said, you know, basically we have, you know, don't have coverage for hardware, which we do. All right, I'm part of the, uh, quote, Omnia plan with it, and we, there is coverage. I called up about it and spoke to a representative who said, well, you have coverage, but it's out of network. When I got home that day and looked on, they actually paid the doctor bill and it says in network. They don't know what they're doing. It's a nightmare. I like to use a different word, but I don't want to say it in public. It's a four-letter word and ends with show. <laughs> That's what it basically has become. They don't know what they're doing. In addition to all the other criteria that they're refusing people, again, that the nightmare we've had with procedures, prescriptions, dental, now it's even the eyeglass wear. So I'm hoping that, again, you seriously consider I was going to ask the same question about, I did see the caucus meeting the other day, unfortunately I couldn't be here. And that was, you know, the ability for them to, you know, try to match. To me, you give me your best offer. 
you're not getting a second chance. What, to undercut another you know, organization out there, one of the other four that you put out to? As far as I'm concerned, you had your opportunity. I'm just wondering if that same courtesy was given to Horizon last year, to Benicard, to you know, Delta Dental last year. Yes. It was. Yes. Okay, so I'm glad Absolutely. that did happen. I quite honestly, though, personally with me, I go shopping for something. Give me your best offer. If your best offer, I'm not going to sit here and let you undercut, because then it's telling me that you could have done better to begin with. Mm. All right. So anyway, that's that's that for the insurance. The other thing that came up, I actually got a call, and I hate to use, and I'm not going to use her name, our health benefits person in the district. You know, again, we're running late. If there is going to be a change, we're going to run into the same problems we had last year in terms of having to switch over last minute. The other thing that comes into play, whether we switch or not, we have the opt-out change of insurance plans, people opting back into insurance, et cetera. That's usually done the month of May, from like May 1st to June 1st. If we're not going to know about this and have rates and everything else by May 6th or whenever your special meeting is going to be, that's also cutting into time, so I'm hoping that you'll consider that and either extend that later. That's why I'm saying we might have a special meeting before May. Right, but if it's due by June 1st, it still doesn't give people much time to make that decision, to sit down, figure what they want to do. So I'm hoping that you know, you'll consider extending the time on that, maybe go to like June 15th or something, May 15th to June 15th, somehow to accommodate and then, you know, have, let people make an informed decision. All right, thank you. Can I just comment? Yes, please. The, 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 believe me, if, if, if we could go out and shop this in November and then give Cindy um, from February to June to do the enrollment in, into everything, believe me, we would. The only reason why it's done like this is that the insurance industry sets this up and they, they lock you into these dates where you can't, you, you just, you're just not going to be able to go and switch in the middle of a year without all your data and go out and price it. And as far as negotiating, to just say one price and that's it, I, I, I know that you don't negotiate like that um, because you've sat down at tables in negotiations with us and it isn't that you sit down and give us one thing and we just give you one thing and that's it and we both walk away and that's what it is. Um, it's a negotiation process. And that same process happens with insurance. It happens when you buy a car. So otherwise, what you do is you just pay. And at the end of the day, if, if we were just to have paid Horizon, there's only so much money that you have to go back that you go back to your taxpayers for, right? Everybody knows that. So your insurance is a big part of that. Your incremental increases you know, in your raises are a portion of that. So, so everything combined is what goes into that, that tax thing. So it allows us where we could use funds for other things to make things work. If the insurance were to go up 10% or 15%, we wouldn't have money to give the raises or we'd have to go, we'd have to go out for an approval because we'd be over the 2%. So, so the insurance and the cost for it is very important. And their service they gave you, Hundred um, percent. The service, not going to tell you, it was good. Um, we could have went with them. We could have went with someone else. We had a gun to our head with Horizon. Okay, nobody really wants to believe it or hear it, but in essence, Horizon held a gun to your head. And Benicard too. And Benicard. Well, my understanding was Benicard was the biggest issue last year because of their built-in. They were trying to bluff years. us and get us boxed into a corner. That's exactly what they did. So, so this year we are going out and we are going to have these these rates and we are going to take it all into account. I mean, Cigna right now is is sitting at home. They're listening to to everybody here. And if I were Cigna, I'd reduce my rate twenty percent. Going, I can't win them at even. <laughs> I better reduce it quite a bit more just to get the work. Um, but I, I don't think we're going to go down that road. And that's fine if, you know, you can reduce the rates all you want, but are we going to end up in the same situation well, and continue? Yeah, yeah the that's thing is that it, it's not undercutting. The, the bidding, the process is giving them an option to come back, but they don't know what the other companies the, the bidding is okay I'm just so speaking. that's was a ho that but that's a common practice right it does, does it do we really need to pick them that that's you know we it still need to be debated and uh, we'll see what the rate is so but I, I think you know um, 
what, why don't we just wait till the 19th and look at the rates, then, then we'll make the decision then. Okay? I'm, I'm just curious, one yeah. other thing though with that is, you know, you're giving Cigna that option. Are the other companies going to have the same option then? Well, the, the Cigna is an incumbent. That's how the practice Absolutely. is. The incumbent, they, 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 uh, by law, they have to give us six, they have to come back with the, uh, the rate six months before the expiration date. Mm -hmm. Right now, they, they uh, provide it 90 days before, so in order for us to go to the market a little earlier. And, uh, you know, as far as timing goes, we actually is a little bit ahead of last year. Last year, at this point, Adamo was just appointed, okay? So they, they started doing their work in May. And Adamo has already started doing their work on April 5th. We already went out to the market. So timing-wise, we are a little bit ahead of last year. And, uh, you know, hope that uh, um, Signal will have a better system when we come to enrollment and stuff. We can just have downloads of the membership's information and upload instead of a Cindy type every one of them in. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Hello, Cynthia Darty, the Health Benefits Coordinator. Um, I'd like to ask you if you can answer to me. Um, Cigna's increase. Do we have a percentage of what her, their increase is? I don't know. Is? Yet. They didn't give you an offer yet. I don't know yet. Okay. I don't want to know until the final. Okay, so I, I want to let you know that every year that since I've been here, we've had um, open enrollment from May 1st to June 1st, and mm -hmm. there's never seemed to be a, a problem with that until last year. Yeah, because you're going the same vendor, and then right now, the last year you went to a different No, we vendor. changed ben vendors since I've been here. We've changed. Okay. Yeah, and we have 15 days till May 1st. Um, there's a lot of work involved, and and sending over electronically doesn't always work. Um, electronic was horrible. I'm still finding people that they have to credit us for. I'm still going through them. And it's not, it, it's been a nightmare. It really has. And I really, really, really employ you to look at this really deep. And if it even is gonna cost us a little bit more money, I, for one, am willing to pay more money for my insurance if I have good insurance. So that's how I feel about that. The second thing is the zoning board. The zoning mm -hmm. issue that you have, I want to play, pledge it for that. Because I was, I was one of those hundred people that fought them several times and then was told the meeting was null and void because somebody's vote, who we know whose vote, what didn't count. Well, they got police on you. They got two police officers outside. That they yeah, got. so, yeah. you know, that was, I, I really applaud you for that because they, you. that's horrible. Thank you. Yeah, see, the other thing that, uh, you know, I know you had a lot of workload last year, more than we anticipated, but uh, we have said before that if we can save a million dollars, we'll be more than happy to have more headcount to Absolutely. help the process, because we're still better off. So um, just want, let's see how, how, you know, what the bottom line is on the 19th, then we'll, we'll go from there. Well, last and year it, was very, very difficult. I, I and, understand. And I understand. You know, I'm still only one person. Yes. Yes, working with but we just need a word employees. from we just need a word from an administration saying, "Hey, we need help." Well, you know, I, well, I, th I think the whole board is more than willing to commit it to to provide help because yes. you know, if you save a lot of money, you get one one or two headcount. We're better off on that. Right, and I did have help. I'd like to thank people for that. The union, you know, people that pitched in to help last yes. year. Yes, yes, okay. and I really appreciate that you you're working when you were still not feeling well. Thank you. Yes. Right. Ooh, we're close today. Evening up. Uh, Brett Baker, 140 Grandview Avenue. First off, Ms. Ward, thank you. Uh, I was going to talk a lot longer, but I got a couple other things I want to talk about, so just thank you. Uh, second, related to insurance, uh, to the employees of the district, I'd be asking the board, where is Alamo? They were here last year with their like song and dance show, and I think as our broker, they should be here every year. And the board, I would also encourage you to hold them accountable. Um, third, uh, I would just like to ask for a response later, just for an update on the Lindenau discussion that came up at last month's board meeting. Uh, but mostly, I just want to say this. On Wednesday, I applauded this board's action to pursue legal action against the zoning board and township for their deliberate continued efforts to increase the population and thus student population of Edison. Like a river finding its way into a crack in stone, hear me out, slowly eroding it, that river eventually breaks away the stone 
and the river flows freely. A loose metaphor for sure. I hope I can make my point clearly. Our river of overcrowding has existed for years, that is true. And the stone is the bedrock of our district, the safety and security of our schools, the professional environment for our teachers and staff, and the learning environment that Edison's parents demand and our students deserve. And to the eight members of this board who voted in favor, thank you. And Mr. Erico, I'm sure if you could have, you would have as well. And so the vote would have been nine nothing. Thank you all for taking steps to reinforce the stone for years to come. The insinuation by others that Edison, by Edison's armchair politicians that this was purely a political move is offensive to parents and residents like myself and hopefully many others. At least this board is doing something. The false narrative that $4 million received last year and this year would somehow make a significant difference in our overcrowding shows truly how much Edison's public officials, many of whom aren't elected, think of the intelligence of this town and its residents. And the continued audacity to act like this is only a Board of Education problem calling for resignations of board members as well as new board members continues the narrative that exists in the town that many, not all, of its municipal officials care about profits instead of students. Our students are watching, their parents are watching, the district staff are watching, our residents are watching. We're all watching and waiting. And the only people that seem to not be watching are certain members of Township Council, the Zoning Board, and members of the Edison Township Administration who find it appropriate to deceive us all and try to distract and divide us. So to those who seek to divide instead of unite, I came tonight to say this. We've got enough battles to fight, from overcrowding to working to be competitive in an increasingly challenging 21st century economy to a budget that still doesn't have its fair share of state funding. And despite the best efforts of those that sit on this board and the thousands of staff members of, of staff members employed by Edison Public Schools, the work continues and it is hard. So if you're seeking to divide instead of help, please do us all a favor and get out. Get out of the way. And if you care so much, come to these meetings instead of hiding behind social media. And to those who feel the need to remind you, to remind me that you've lived here for 30 plus years and therefore I should be deferent to your opinion and your advice, well I appreciate it, I'm not intimidated. And I promise you all I'm not going anywhere. So help or please get out of the way. Thank you. Thank you. You know, well said. Yeah. Uh, no, Brett, you, you brought up a very good point. I, and I've heard this from other people that, that we haven't addressed the overcrowding issue. Um, and we did. And the board did in the past. And the board put up a bond, and the bond was shot down. After that bond was shut down, we still put additions on Menlo Park, um, Woodbrook. Woodbrook. Right now, we're building. 20 classrooms? Okay, yeah. and we're ten, doing this. 10 in FDR, 10 in uh, um, uh, Woodrow Wilson. Right, so, so we are taking steps, but you would need a much larger bond to take care of the overcrowding that we have. We have, I believe, over 4,000 unhoused students right now. Yeah, based right? on the Five? calculation, yes. 5,000. So it, it is a, a monumental task. And, and those other people that quote those things are just so disconnected. Um, that it becomes alarming that, that that's the kind of comments that you see out there. But I thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Yes. Jeff Bowden, 2 Ethel Road, ETA President. Mrs. Ward, you did a great job. You're always well prepared. You still have it. <laughs> On a side note, um, thank you. you're welcome. I would be remiss, I was not gonna comment tonight, but I have to comment. Um, Cigna, the town, you're suing the town. That's a good thing. No choice. Look, everybody on this board works very, very hard. I know how hard you work, I know the problems you face. However, Cigna, was an experiment and it just didn't work, okay? So you need to turn in different directions, but please, like those 800 employees that work for the town who are still enjoying the same insurance, let's not make the Edison 2300 employees the sacrificial lambs to the fact that we're in this situation because of the over-construction, over-building, and the just basic disregard for our schools over the last decade. Please consider those people when you make this decision. Thank you. Thank you.
Any other public comments? See none. Can I have a motion? Motion to adjourn. All right. Second. Mr. Pressure. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.